Welcome to the Valor Podcast. We believe that you have a unique purpose that needs developed, protected, and encouraged. We trust Valor will give you new strength with each episode. Now let's join our Valor Coach, Pastor Dwayne Wolf, for today's special message for men. Pride, okay? And uh, we'll spend a few minutes on that. And uh, specifically, as we know, uh, what we're discussing is uh, that which is a carnal, a carnal pride, not the the pride that we have uh, in in our Lord. That we are, in fact, proud of the gospel, proud of Him, and uh, but a carnal pride. So let's just talk about that for a minute, few minutes. Are you good? Okay. Number one, and I'm just going to breeze over a couple of these things for the sake of time, but I got a couple of things I want to hone in on. Number one, pride. We want to remember this. Pride is resistance to anything that God has said. Pride is resistance to anything that God has said. Um, uh, even, if, uh, even if what God has said doesn't appear to be very humble. Okay, so remember that uh, God says to Colin, you are the leader. Well, that doesn't sound very humble. I got 20 other guys here on the, the GSA campus or whatever it is. I've got 20 other guys here on the, and they've all been here for years. Some of them are really old and uh, <laughs> they've been out here on the campus for years and years, you know, but uh, I want you to be the leader. Okay. Okay. Now, when we hear things like that, when we hear God calling us to greatness, sometimes we don't even discern or distinguish it's his voice, or we don't rise up to it and humble our heart to it and say, yes, and okay, because that sounds like pride, maybe. So it sounds like it might be something that, so uh, pride is resistance to anything, say anything that God has said. So it's the opposite of humility. Humility is total obedience to what God has said. Humility acknowledges the leading of the Lord, seeks the leading of the Lord, yields to the leading of the Lord. Pride is described as having a stiff neck. Okay? God would say that in the Old Testament they were stiff neck. Okay? We said uh, in church a couple weeks ago, pride is Satan's substitute for righteousness. Because without the righteousness of God... Uh, you do not have, a, without the righteousness of God, you don't have a backbone. You're a boneless chicken farm. Okay, without the righteousness of God, you you really don't have something to make you erect, to stand you up. Okay, and yet with the righteousness of man or the demonic righteousness, you have got what God calls a stiff neck. So we're to rely on a righteousness that comes from God. So pride is Satan's substitute for righteousness. Does that make sense? It pretends to be righteous without submission to Jesus. Pride says you can do this on your own. You aren't that bad. You don't need God to coach you in this little area of your life. You can handle this. You don't need the lordship of Jesus in your marriage. You don't need the lordship of Jesus in this thought right now. You, you don't need the lordship of Jesus in your money. You don't need the lordship of Jesus. It covers up inferiority and rejection, which is the natural result of unrighteousness. Number three, pride is the natural, and I think this is real important, pride is the natural, we talked for several weeks about doubt, distrust, unbelief, bitterness, jealousy, and selfish ambition, and envy. Remember that, those things? Well, pride is the natural result. And remember, I mentioned to you that the Lord had instructed me to preach on those three topics, spend some time on those three topics. Pride was to be the end of that topic. Then the last day that I spoke on pride, the Holy Spirit kind of interrupted my message, and we kind of went a different way than I'd even planned on pride that day. And we may get back to some thoughts I don't know. Well, I think we will, even maybe this week we will. Some thoughts on that. But pride is what I want you to see, 
is that pride is the natural progression of allowing those other things to develop or have place in your heart. In other words, you will have no choice about it if you allow doubt and distrust and unbelief to exist in your heart. And when we say exist in your heart, we know that means exist in any segment of your heart. The part of your heart we're, we're really talking about is your soul. Your soul is broken up into many segments. The way you deal with authority, the way you deal with money, the way you deal with sexuality, the way you deal with relationships, the way you deal with vocation, the way you deal with many segments. Okay? If you allow doubt, distrust, unbelief, and then the next progression beyond that will always be whenever you allow that to exist, you're going to move into progressively selfish ambition, envy, jealousy, bitterness. And the end result of that, the next progression along that line of progression is going to be pride. Okay? So in other words, you will have no, you will have no, um, and pride doesn't always show up as somebody being arrogant or cocky again. Pride shows up as doing it your way. Pride shows up as resisting the word of God. Pride shows up as uh, 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 not working with the Holy Spirit and submitting to his lordship. Okay, is that right? So, but pride will be a natural progression of those things. So if you allow those things to exist in any segment of your soul, of your thinking, of your perspective, then that's just going to be a natural result. You won't, it's not like, uh, it's not like you have to think to be proud. It'll just be an end result, okay? So you'll be naturally pushed over into that pride realm. So here's a thought for you, is that, the lack of faith in God, because that's the foundation of this progression we just discussed, the lack of faith in God is actually the root of every dysfunction. Just a little thought to drop into your heart there. The lack of the faith, the lack of faith, true faith in God in every area of your life. Okay? Talking about Jason now, we're dealing with the... the uh, um, the wife realm. Uh, we're dealing with the health realm. We're dealing with the healing and the wellness realm. We're dealing with the baby realm. All of that realm, right? So the doctor runs that little Q-tip across there. Pew, that thing opens up. Gunk and goop coming out, all right? Okay. He had to step into his office. He had to step into what he knew. They've had to embrace the word, continue to do that. Now, that's... Faith in, trust in God in every segment or arena or area or however you want to phrase it of your life is essentially the key to overcome the, the bitterness, the envy, the jealousy, the selfish ambition, and the pride issues, okay? That's why, and I like this Second uh, Peter chapter 1, uh, where he says that we've been given everything we need for life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who's given us these magnificent promises so we can partake of the divine nature. He goes on to say, for this very reason, applying all diligence in your faith, add to your faith, and then he goes on to name several things to add to your faith. Add these things to your faith. Anytime you want to build, and by the way, Paul says, I've laid a foundation, and that foundation is Christ. All of you should be master builders to build on the foundation that's been laid. That foundation is Christ Jesus. Essentially, it's faith in what God has done for you in Christ Jesus. So as we are in 2 Peter chapter 1 here, anytime we're going to build, we have to, we have to start with faith. We can't start with moral excellence. We can't start with goodness and brotherly love. We can't start with all of those things. We have to start with faith. Faith is the number one issue. Faith in God concerning the area that you're targeting, the area you're dealing with, the area you need to overcome in, the area you need to grow in, the area that you're being challenged in right now. That's the number one deal that's going to keep you from falling into the trap 
of uh, bitterness and jealousy and envy and eventually then pride. Making sense? Okay. Now, number four. Pride then is a persistent push to get yours, to get what you deserve, to get what you want, to get it now through the means of the flesh or natural methodology and not through the Spirit. Essentially, the carnal man and the spirit man want the same thing in a lot of ways. Want to succeed, want to prosper, because the inward drives of the wants that are in there are placed in there in many ways by God in the carnal man and in the spiritual man. Want to leave a legacy, want to be an influencer, want to be a leader, want to accomplish good things. There's an inward drive on the inside. But the carnal man's trying to do it his way and trying to do it without being submitted to God. And the spiritual man's trying to do it through the Spirit. Okay? So James chapter 4, we've looked at that in the past a little bit, James chapter 4. What's the source of quarrels and conflicts in your midst and among you? Is it not your desires that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have. So the problem is you're committing murder or hatred or you're having a wrong relationship toward others because you're trying to trump one another, get it yourself, go after it with the means of the flesh. You're envious and you cannot obtain, so then you fight and quarrel. You've got things going on on the inside of you where you're striving essentially, to accomplish and fulfill, lay hold of and get, but you're doing it in a worldly manner instead of trusting in the Lord, okay? Exactly what happened to Satan. Satan said, I will exalt my throne, and he was cast down. Jesus said, I'll exalt your throne, and he was exalted. Simply Matthew 6, 33, I'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, And that means doing what he says, following him, submitting to him, letting him be the coach of my life, and you'll be exalted. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The Gentiles in that passage, starting in verse 24, the Gentiles are anxious and worrisome about every single thing in their life, and they're trying to press their way into it, and they're not going to find it. Make sense? So getting your needs met through flesh is pride, whereas getting your needs met, how many of you know we all need to get our needs met? But getting your needs met through God's word is humility. So that's why we need a word on things. That's why we need to stay in the word. That's why we need to be hearing from the spirit. That's why we need an intimate walk with him and a fellowship with him. Faith is living your life according to the word. Let me finish with a couple thoughts. I know we're a little late. Too many Christians are tossing God on top of their lives like dressing or frosting. And it's no wonder that their lives are not much different than the unsaved. Many Christians really are still operating in the realm of pride in that they're really not seeking to get their needs met by the coaching voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is jealous, he says in James, to completely and totally lead and guide the Christian into the meeting of every need. He's jealous to do that. He's extremely jealous to do that. And in fact, he says, when we don't let him be that husband, that lover, that provider for us, that he begins to resist us. He will resist the proud, but he'll give grace to the humble wife. Your role in the spirit is that as of a wife to a husband. So if you're independent, arrogant, see some of us don't like the way our wives act, but we act the same way toward the Lord. Just a thought for the married men.
training for the unmarried men. All right, so James chapter 3 and 4, James chapter 3 and 4 are really about God wanting to meet our needs and how he can do it only if we completely trust and depend upon him. Trust him, believe him, and rest in him. Make sense? All right, just some thoughts. Father, we just uh, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this morning and just the mutual edification here this morning, uh, the encouragement one to another. Uh, thank you that we are led of and by the Holy Spirit. And let's go to Romans chapter 8 just for a second uh, with your eyes closed, heads bowed still. Uh, but uh, Romans chapter 8, he says the true sons are those who are led by the Spirit. They're not those who show up at church. They're not those who just said a prayer. They're not those who just went to an altar one day. The true sons are those who are led by the Spirit. So, Father, we agree together today to be Spirit-led, uh, to be looking to our Spirit, listening to our Spirit, your Spirit dwelling in our Spirit uh, 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 working together with the Word, which is the manifestation of the written will of the Spirit. Uh, just in every way, we're going to choose today to be Spirit-led. We know it's the potential for us. It's the possibility for us because we're Spirit-born. And so we choose to elevate Jesus to be the Lord of every segment of our soul and to look to the coaching voice of Jesus and trust not in ourselves as the proverb says, lean not in our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge you and let you direct our path. Thank you for it. Thank you, therefore, uh, for not only humble men today, but therefore successful, victorious, uh, uh, peace-filled, rest-filled men who know you're working out everything uh, to the good in our lives and to the good of the kingdom. We thank you for it today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. That's our message for today from the Valor Ministry of Dwayne Wolf. We pray that you will leave ordinary behind, take up your weapons, and protect your destiny assignment with all your might. If you enjoyed this message, tell your friends about Valor and visit our Facebook page. Until next time, God bless. Oh, yeah.